Okay, now Brings Problems Analysis, January 2011. Uh, so let's kick off with this guy. So, nice easy one to start with. Done this umpty dumpty times before. Uh, nitration. Um, ally mechanism formation of four nitromethyl benzene. So I'm going to start with methyl benzene. Like so. Does it want me ally mechanism using a da, 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 using that as an electrophile? Um, doesn't say it wants me to show how I get to my electrophile. So how come the electron from the benzene ring give me uh, benzene? The bond breaks, the carbon hydrogen bond breaks. That should be CH3, of course, CH3, to return my six electrons into the benzene ring and I was to make H plus, like so. Oh, right, I've now got uh, four isomers of dinitro uh, methyl benzenes. I've got to draw the other two. So, uh, where could they go? Um, so, I've got, I've got my methyl benzene there. I have a nitro group there and then a nitro group opposite there and then the final one if I've got my methyl benzene there I could have them both coming off like so I get on to polymers now I uh, wanted to uh, see if I could make polymers from these two state synthesis which one, which of the isomers do I need to use? Um, if you look, the nitrogens are on, that's one, three, five positions there, that's where my nitrogens are. So if I go back to here, they've got to come from that one there, that's the same place. So it's isomer three that I would need to use, first of all. Um, do, 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 do. How am I going to do this? So if I start off with isomer 3, I am going to reduce it using tin, HCl and water. I've got two nitro groups. Each nitro group needs six, so I need 12 hydrogens to give me two amine groups, like so, and I'm going to make four water molecules as well. Um, and then the next one, what do I need to add to that? If I go back to my polymer, that's got to be uh, the di acid that I add to it, so the di acid going to be that boy there and the type of uh, condensation polymer is going to be a polyamide um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, a uh, systematic name for glycerol. I mean, that looks like a crazy triglycerol, but don't panic about that at the moment, it's just where they've drawn it. Systematic name of uh, glycerol is going to be propane, one, two, three, trial. Suitable alcohol that could be used to make biodiesel. biodiesel. Um, well, uh, we want an alcohol that's going to be renewable, so ethanol would be a good one. Um, you've looked at ethanol as a fuel. Uh, so, um, ethanol is always a good one. Um, moving on, it tells me that the equilibrium, the alcohol, ROH, is added in excess. Why? Well, it's an equilibrium, and you'll remember from your AS days, and probably your A2, hopefully. 
um, that if you uh, add more of this boy here, the equilibrium is going to shift to the right hand side to remove it from Le Chatelier's principle. So it shifts the equilibrium to the right hand side. Okay, esters can be made by reacting alcohol with a carboxylic acid um, or with an acid anhydride. Right? I want to form ethyl propanoate. Uh, started from a carboxylic acid. So the carboxylic acid I need to begin with is going to be propanoic acid. I am going to have to react it with ethanol from the ethyl. I need concentrated sulfuric acid to do it and I reflux and I will make the required ester plus water as well. For the acid anhydride, luckily now I've done that, that makes it a bit easier. So CH3, CH2, C double bond O, and then I just copy out the um, acid. So can you see that that is just that boy up there? It's just propanoic acid. And then rather than the H there, I just copied that bit there. So, and I add to that again ethanol. That gives me my product. But this time it will also give me from this bit propanoic acid. Like so. Okay, uh, compound AC4H8O3 can lose water um, to form either a cyclic ester or a polyester. Identify compounds A, B, and C. So if it's going to form an ester, I need a carboxylic acid and I need an alcohol. It's got four carbons. Like so. Does that match the formula? Four, six, seven, eight, three, eight. Yeah. Compound B is going to be a cyclic ester, so it's going to join up. Those two are going to join up to give me my ester. So it's going to have five carbon atoms and then an O in the middle, like so, to join up with the ester, so that bucks up and it goes to form water. Compound C is just going to be your polyester, like so, where that would form a um, polymer. Right, so give me quite a complicated molecule here. Uh, and I'm going to investigate some reactions about it. The first thing I'm going to do is add Tollens reagent um, and warm it. What would I see? Well, it's got an aldehyde group here, so I'd expect to see a silver mirror. It would be an oxidation reaction, because it's a reaction that Sopranol undergoes. Um, and the structure of the product is that that's going to be a carb become a carboxylic acid. So it looks exactly the same, but that becomes a carboxylic acid. I'm then going to reduce it using sodium borohydride, giving me a nice way of representing. So in comes a hydride ion. That's delta plus, that's delta minus, curly arrow, there, that bond goes to give me that. I've got some water knocking around. That attacks the hydrogen to form a bond to give me my alcohol plus OH minus. Okay, for the next question, um, part C, I've just gone back so we can have a look at the molecule. It wants me to state a reaction that does not involve the aldehyde group 
what would it be? Well, it would react with bromine, of course, because it's got um, an alkene functional group. It would go orange to colourless, and um, what would be my product? Well, the bromine would add across the double bond. So it would add across there, it would add across that double bond there, it would add across that double bond there as well. So that would be my product. Okay, I've now got a lot of information to read through. Um, chemists attempted the synthesis of an alpha amino acid using synthesis 1. So synthesis 1 is using um, concentrated ammonia solution. Can we do that? So my equation for the reaction of Cl, CH, CH3, COOH with ammonia now is going to substitute but it's an alkyl condition so that's going to become O minus um, I'm they're also going to make NH4 plus Cl minus and I'm also going to have to make some H plus as well. Um, now you'll remember uh, when you looked at uh, the synthesis of amines you can get quite a lot of impurities because you just keep substituting um, these groups onto the nitrogen. So if you do that Um, so what you're doing is do you just keep substituting this bit onto you replace a hydrogen with that bit. So another one you just pick one of those and you put that hydrogen there. Right, so I'm now going to use the synthesis two. Uh, so what you can do is you can just copy out. Synthesis 2, you've got R C H O. So and they've told you what R is. So you've got your aldehyde group. If you then just complete the R bit for that, so that bit's that bit there, and then the R I've got there, um, it's going to end up by being, you're going to have your carboxylic acid like so, then you've got your aldehyde group like so. Right, you now need to draw the 3D diagrams um, of my isomers. So they've told me what R is, CH2, COOH, um, you're also going to have NH2 group and your carboxylic acid group there. Okay, if you've then got your mirror playing there quite easily, that group stays the same up there. That goes there, your NH2 goes there, and your H goes there. Uh, next one, two possible disadvantages. And two ways that we can do this, this comes up a lot. Uh, disadvantages, you get side effects. Um, one one uh, optical isomer may have, uh, may give you nasty side effects if you take it. The other one is it's very difficult and it's very expensive to separate the different optical isomers. How can we get around it? We can start with a naturally occurring chiral molecule, um, or we can use enzymes as part of the process, um, as part of the synthetic process as well.